All right, friends, we're at Modoc. It looks like it's a buy-sell trade store, but it has pre-owned men and women's clothing. Let's see, first rack. Let me zoom out. Looks like we have some Nike. We're gonna have to do conversions, 2,700 yen. What is this? Oh, I don't know that brand. 1,600 yen. Let's see. Puma, 2,700. This looks old, like vintage, right? I don't know if you guys can hear me. If you can't, we're gonna have to do voiceover. Members only. I used to do okay selling these jackets. I used to find them at the bins, but not anymore. All hubby's start telling me to go this way. That corner. <laughs> oh. Hubby's sent me over here to the designer. Let's see, 100,000 yen. For Louis. What's 154,000? We're gonna have Hubby do the calculations for us. 88,000 yen. Which one do you want, like a 154,000? Yeah. Thousand dollars. What? Mm -hmm. For a wallet? That's crazy. How about 44,000? What the heck? Is that wallet new? Or 289. Oh, that's good for that. 289 for that bag? That's good. But my gosh. 36,000? 236. That's not bad for an Epi. But I'm not, I have no idea why this wallet's $1,000. Maybe because it has the bag? All right, friends, this is when we have to switch to voiceover because unfortunately, just like Los Angeles, they are blasting copywritten music. This is me just showing you I had to purchase these walker shoes because I had on my knee high Stuart Weitzman boots. You guys, this day we walked 30,000 steps. I lasted about three hours in those boots and I paid $20 for those shoes you just saw me wearing um, at this store called Don Quixote. We will get to that later. Um, so yeah, that was just me showing you that. That Chanel wallet was $200. It was like 234 Just keep in mind, currently the day I am filming this voiceover, every thousand yen is $6.50. So right now our dollar is stronger than their yen, which I guess is like groundbreaking. I, I don't know if this is, listen, I'm not a historian, but people are really excited about it. Um, the Americans we, we saw while we were here were like, this has not happened in a very long time. So, uh, it's a really good time to shop there because, you know, our dollar is stronger than their yen. So when you see me showing you prices, just keep that as like a, a, a baseline in your head. A thousand yen equals six dollars and fifty cents. So those jackets I just showed you, those were like thirteen to like fourteen, like between twelve and fourteen dollars. Um, so they have a luxury section in this store and the prices range, as you heard me say just now, anywhere from like $150 all the way up to, I still don't understand why that wallet was $1,000. No clue. If any of you know, is that like a limited edition wallet? Let us know. But they have a whole luxury sec section above the store, like, uh, you know, on the wall. Similar, if you guys know Crossroads, similar to what Crossroads does. And then they also had things in cases. It is very common to find a lot of buy, sell, trade stores. You guys, this Marnie coat was 13,000 yen. I do very well selling Marnie, but then I was thinking about picking this up for myself. This store, hands down, one of my favorites. Um, I would go back here when I go back to Tokyo. I'm already talking about going back, you guys. I'm, I'm figuring out how I can go back, take my children, and make it a business trip. I'm not joking. <laughs> but this store, out of like the six I visited, definitely one of my favorites. It's like a crossroads, but even better. Uh, you could tell they're just very picky with what they take. They have a lot of um, sellers, people who bring their clothes, you know, to sell it, who have super, super high-end stuff, uh, mid-tier to like high-end luxury. I 
I'm just telling you this. I know this because I was in this store for hours, you guys. I did not drag hubby along. Let me just say we were here for a honeymoon. I told him I was like, you can go back to the hotel. I'll be fine. I've got Google Maps. He wanted to come. So I did not drag him here with me. I just like to give that disclaimer. But I was in here for like two and a half hours, you guys. So I saw a lot of people actually selling their clothing. And I learned that there is a lot of luxury in Tokyo. I did not know this. That Tokyo is one of the most populated cities in our world. I knew there were a lot of people that lived here, but 37 million people live in Tokyo. That blew my mind when I looked that up. So uh, there was like a statistic I read that something like 80% of pre-owned luxury goes through Japan, whether it's sold here, whether it comes from here, whether it makes its way here. So... Anyways, all that to say, this store had some amazing stuff. Now, it was priced way up. Um, you really had to do the conversion. <laughs> I'm glad Hubby was here because he was like my walking calculator because I would get excited and see something like 30,000 yen right there. Then I quickly did the calculations and realized, oh, that's about 200 American dollars. So just from the first trip, what I realized about thrifting, I'm doing air quotes because it's really like going to buy, sell, trade stores because a lot of their thrift stores are buy, sell, trade stores. You got to have the cash to play, <laughs> as they say, because if you are a mid-tier to luxury seller and you came to Tokyo or Kyoto or Osaka with 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, you could make so much money. I mean, they just it's like hand over fist, mid-tier, luxury clothing, shoes, handbag. I mean, look, this is the first, there's the second rack I'm touching. We've already found Marnie, Acne, um, just so many amazing brands, you guys, but you're going to pay for it. So if you are the type of reseller who doesn't mind spending $500 to sell something for $1,000 um, and you have the cash, Tokyo's the place for you, hands down. So I'm going to work really hard and save all my pennies from my live sales and come back. And we will have some kind of like extraordinary luxury come thrift with me to resell. Um, but I just was not prepared. For some reason, I was expecting like Goodwill pricing. And I had done my research and I knew that there was a lot of luxury here, a lot of mid-tier stuff, but I just didn't realize that they, pr they price their stuff up, you guys. But they have some unique pieces that you can easily flip for three times your money, but you need $500 to get that piece. You're going to see in the next video, I found this um, really special Marnie sweater. I think it was like goat hair or something. You'll see in the next video. You're definitely going to want to check that one out. And they only had it priced at $350. And I say only because this sweater just sold. I found a sold comp the week before for $1,500, you guys. You better believe I picked that up for $3. So that's the type of thrifting I <laughs> I was experiencing. It was just blowing my mind. But um, that Tory Burch purse, I felt like they had that overpriced, that black one. They had it priced at like two something. It was like I did the calculation. It was like two... It was like 175 or 225 it was too much um and for some reason they really mark up their coach um i have about three japan videos coming your way so you're going to hear me reference a lot of future videos but um in the next video i'm going to take you to a store called don quixote that place will blow your mind please google it it's like a target a walmart a buy sell trade store with luxury beauty it's wild. It's like a clothing store. Those shoes I just showed you, those walker shoes I had on, I got those from there. I mean, they have Louis Vuitton and they have $2 eyeliner and they sell luggages and then they sell shoes and then they sell pans. It, it's wild. So <laughs> just prepare yourself. I hope you guys are excited for all of the Japan videos. And I will include at the end um, some like just Japan sightseeing footage if any of you are interested that Patagonia was 9,000 yen remember I said 1,000 yen is six dollars and fifty cents the time I'm filming this um, so that I definitely passed on that I'm very particular with Patagonia if you guys see anything that I should have picked up let me know but I couldn't I didn't have service in the store, which was really weird. So I couldn't Google lens anything. So I don't know if that was like a really special Patagonia. You know how some of them are limited edition and you can't find them anywhere. 
This store is five floors, you guys. Grab a snack, grab a drink. This is going to be a long video. This was the more affordable floor. Um, from what I can gather, these are like the mid range, like mid tier brands, along with some boutique pieces. So they have a lot of brands here. And from what I could do in my Google, whenever I would find this is hubby showing me um, like their sister stores. <laughs> kept pulling me off to show me things. It was cute. It was like taking your little kid to the thrift store. He's like, mommy, look at this. He's like, hey, babe, look at this. Look at this. So this, sh <laughs> this shirt, you guys, $6.50. So more affordable floor. What I was saying was um, they had a lot of boutique pieces, like a lot of boutique brand pieces on this floor, all the way up to like mid-tier Brooks Brothers, Tory Burch, stuff like that. I did pick up this Brooks Brothers shirt. This was about six fifty seven dollars it was less than eight dollars and i found sold comps on this for thirty to forty dollars so i'm not sure if i missed something here because like i said i didn't have a really good service here and they had a lot of tags that were um, in japanese like this you can see originally it retailed for 2900 yen so it wasn't a ton just a lot of brands i've literally never seen before uh donna karen new york the black label that's not bad for about 10, was that like 10, 11 bucks, but it ha it wasn't in the best shape. So I decided to pass on that. One thing I did notice thrifting here, you guys, is they have a ton of vintage stuff. Some stores, some of their buy, sell, trade stores are literally nothing but vintage, which you will see in upcoming videos. <laughs> here he goes again. Hey, babe, look at these. <laughs> it's just funny. He's just distracting me, but it was helpful. I think he was like, hey, look, those pants look cool. So a lot of the boutique slash like more common brands, I guess for Japan, I had never seen a lot of these brands were ranging anywhere from like six to fifteen dollars. Um, they had some shoes scattered about. These were 100 percent leather. They were eight thousand yen. This is a brand I've never heard of. Palanco? Palenco? I don't, should I have gotten those? But keep in mind, like I said, every thousand yen. You'll hear me keep repeating that just to remind you and myself, because I had to keep telling myself every thousand yen is six dollars and fifty cents. Then you can just do some easily easy multiplication to figure out a general area. And then when I would check my calculator, I was like, oh, OK, this is about right. So huge store, you guys. This, like I said, was the more affordable um, like mid-range boutique pieces, a ton of stuff to go through. But because I had never seen a lot of these brands and I, it was hard to look them up, I struggled. This C by Chloe, I thought about getting. But for 4,400 yen, um, I decided to pass on it. I am able to source C by Chloe pretty easily online. So I decided to pass on that. And it just looked like an older style. So, but... Um, there were some luxury pieces that I did end up picking up like that Marnie sweater, which you'll see in the upcoming video. You can see here I'm trying to find the fabric. It did have like the style name and everything, but I couldn't find any recent sold comps for that. So I decided to pass. But this this store is amazing. You guys, if you're ever in Tokyo and you're looking for a store to shop at, whether it be for reselling or for yourself, I would recommend this one. Like I said, this was one of the best ones I went to. They are all very clean, all very organized, but especially if you're a reseller and you're looking for yourself, this could be good. I thought about getting these Gucci slides. Uh, hubby actually pointed these out to me. Remember how I said, he's like, hey, babe, look here. <laughs> he said, hey, I found some Gucci. So those are $32.52 the day I'm filming this voiceover. I just couldn't find any sold comps, you guys. I would like run to the window to try to get service. This place is like Fort Knox, like no service in there. As soon as I stepped out of the store or I went near the window, I had immediate service. So I think they're really old. And I don't know. I just don't do that great selling luxury footwear, you guys. I will. I currently have like some Prada shoes listed in my closet I've had for years. Some Gucci loafers I've had for years. I don't know. If you want to send me an offer, go check out my Poshmark closet. I'm really open to reasonable offers on my luxury footwear. The only luxury footwear I do really good selling footwear. I sound like such a like, <laughs> do people say footwear anymore? It sounds very 1980s. Um, the only shoes that I have l luck selling are Louboutins. 
I do very well selling Louboutins and like recent Manolo Blahnik heels. I don't know why that is. This is a bolo, by the way. Amri, A-M-E-R-I. I got this um, brand, a men, men's t-shirt. I showed you guys when I got this in a Nordstrom palette. This t-shirt had pit stains. It had stains that I could not remove. I tried to stain remove that shirt like 20 times. The, do you know this t-shirt sold? I can't even speak. It sold for $140, you guys, for a pit stained t-shirt. So if you are looking for, you want to know a new bolo, A-M-E-R-I, look it up. People love it. I don't know if a celebrity wore it. I was going to do research into it. My mind was just blown that that tattered t-shirt sold for so much. I did end up picking up this styled dress um, and it's new with the tags and it was 4,500 yen, you guys. Heck yeah, I'm going to pick that up. Heck yeah. Here is a closer look at the dress, new with the tags. This um, was under $30, you guys. I I don't know what happened here because this retails for $225. And usually the stuff that I was finding in this store that was new with the tags, um, they were marking way higher than this. So, I, hey, I will take it, friends. This is a size 8. I thought about keeping this for myself, but it's not really my style. Actually, Hubby found this too. <laughs> He was just pulling the racks like, hey, can you sell this? It's new with the tags. He doesn't know anything about brands. You got he knows the basics. Let, let me give him some credit. He does know he does watch some of these videos. He like brand 101. Like he knows like Old Navy's not that great. Gucci is good. Like bare minimum brand knowledge. He knows it, but he definitely didn't know that brand. He just saw the I think he actually picked it up for me because he's like, oh, this is your size. Would you wear this? And I was like, uh, no, but I will sell it. So I picked that up. I picked up the Brooks Brothers shirt. Uh, you can see he's carrying my finds there and a couple other things. Um, most of the things I found, you guys, are, were on this floor. These were the things that I found that were like more reasonable, <laughs> more the pricing I was hoping to pay. I do regret not picking up some of those Louis, you guys. Some of those Louis were only priced at like 150 purses. I'm telling you, this is my notice for me to you. For those of you that have the cash flow that sell like mid range to luxury items, do your research, but it might be worth a cheap flight to Tokyo and make a business trip out of it. Um, just saying Japan Air is now offering really affordable flights to Japan during certain times of the year. I've already researched going back. So I'm not doing the best job at showing you guys the brands. <laughs> it does get better in the future videos, you guys. It was just really hard to try to film this stuff and not show people in the video. I thought about picking up this dress. Um, it's striped. It's... I couldn't find any sold comps. A lot of this stuff, you, you guys, I didn't pick up because I just couldn't find any sold comps and I had to be very selective because I was flying home, obviously checked out some purses um some other purses were decently priced some of them i will say this store was priced great if you're shopping for yourself but as a reseller like i said um unless you have fifteen thousand yen to <laughs> spend on a purse you just have to be really selective and you have to be able to check comps so i will say if i do come back here I'm going to need to, I, I can't bring a laptop in the store, but I'm going to need like reliable internet because you just don't want to spend 10,000, 15,000, 30,000 yen on something. They had an Hermes t-shirt up there for 19,000 yen. Let's do some quick calculations on that. Like you don't want to spend 19,000 yen on a shirt, which is $123. Not that bad for Hermes, honestly, but you want to check comps. You don't want to spend a hundred dollars on a t-shirt that sits and doesn't sell so I will come back here with reliable internet I'm already manifesting it you guys the coat section was amazing like I said you can tell their buyers they're on it you know they know what what people want uh, that shop at their stores they had a ton of coats a ton of sweaters jackets brands I have never heard of uh, I have heard of Vanessa Bruno. That was 2,700 yen. I did pick that up. Um, we will see how that one sells. I will keep you posted. Vanessa Bruno is a bolo, friends. Definitely a brand you want to know. Uh, the coats can retail for $1,000. The most affordable coat I've seen uh, retails for like five, $600. So I will keep you posted. $17 for that? Absolutely. So 
Now we're going upstairs to the discount floor, which is, I guess, the top floor. Everything on this floor is $3.58. So 550 yen. Look at how huge this place is, you guys. Huge. And it has this winding staircase that is really narrow. Like if you ever have a fear of heights, be careful <laughs> going here. You really want to hold on because you're going pretty high up. I skipped the men's section because at this point I didn't film everything. You guys, we'd already been in this store for like two hours. So I was like, I can't show you guys everything. One thing I love about Japan is they love if you photograph and film, they want you promoting their business. It is so refreshing. The only other place that makes you feel so like open about filming and taking photos is LA. And, and the thing is, they don't even encourage it. They just don't care. Like people do not care here. If you're filming or photographing, they don't care. But in Japan, I shouldn't say the whole country, but in the cities I went to, they actually encourage you. They're like, please take photos, take videos, because they want you to promote their stuff, their store. And they know that it's, you know, a lot of tourists come here. So it was great. I could have my, my camera out the whole time. And they even had a sign saying, you know, if you shop here, you might be featured on someone's video. So I was like, well, I guess I don't, you know, you guys can see from my videos. I really try to not film other people because, you know, they, they may not want to be on YouTube, but um, I just felt a little bit more lax here because it was just so openly welcome and encouraged. So there's the sign, 550 yen for everything with the yellow tag, which is $3.58. I will say this, this floor was womp womp. <laughs> this is the floor I found Shein, Topshop, H&M, flammable stuff from boutiques that are not that great <laughs> for you for the new people you I always get on one video I always get one comment will say what do you mean by flammable when I say flammable you guys I'm being facetious I mean like if you stand too close to a flame and that cheap item your your shirt would catch a blaze you know what I'm saying that like that type of clothing that's what was up here <laughs> I was really hoping that they would have the same stuff that I found on the second floor up here. But no, of course not. It was all like cheapy beepy stuff. So I was even looking for myself, you guys. I'm not above wearing a $5 dress. Like, I don't care if it's cute and I can save it from the landfill. I will get it. But a lot of this stuff was just no bueno. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. So I did go through almost this entire floor because I was like, finally, th there's something here that's like under, you know, like 10 bucks. Um, but yeah, I would say from the six thrift stores I've went to, I'm no Japan thrift store um, connoisseur or anything. But I will say that if you do come here wanting to thrift and you want some good quality stuff for yourself or whether to resell, you're going to have to have the cash. You just, you just have to like you're, you'll be lucky if you pay $20 per item. Um, yeah, I just, that's just the reality of it. That's just what I've learned that, but there's money to be made here, but you need the money to buy the money items. Like in this store alone, you guys, I spent a lot of money. <laughs> You, I'll tell you some totals in the haul. I got to give you little carrots to make you subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers, you guys. I'm going to do a huge 20K giveaway. So make sure you subscribe. I got to leave little carrots to make you come back. And I'll tell you what I spent on everything. But, I, you know, I just, that's just what I learned. You have to have money here to be able to to buy things <laughs> you just they price their things up but a lot of it is worth it in my opinion so I didn't buy anything on this floor I went through the entire floor you guys um so I don't know I feel like I've rambled enough this video is getting really long I know you guys say you like the long videos but at some point it's like I'm just it sounds like I'm just talking to a friend <laughs> you guys I mean how many of you are genuinely still here at the 24 minute mark if you are still here at the 24 minute mark, I want you to comment Japan. Just put the word Japan in. You can leave another comment if you want, whatever you want to say, but start your comment with the word Japan. I'm just curious. <laughs> I've done this a couple of times and it always fascinates me how many people are still listening to me just like flap my chaps at 24 minutes. So if you're still here, comment the word Japan 
in the comments down below and I'll know you're a true oldie but a goldie because you're just hanging out with your girl just listening to me like I said flap my chest I literally sound like an 80 year old woman woman flapping my chaps does anyone say that anymore <laughs> you guys oh all right this floor was no bueno but huge ton of stuff huge um and this did teach me that they do take you know they do buy more um mall brand stuff but i think it's probably filtered out or maybe it's sent straight to the store i don't know i tried to make friends with the store manager but her english was not that great and i speak absolutely no japanese so i couldn't because you guys know i'll talk to anybody i <laughs> And I'll make conversations and learn things. Probably I shouldn't be learning, but I couldn't figure out if they just buy things um, from their sellers and send straight up here. Or if it's started, started downstairs and then filtered up here once it doesn't sell. Because none of the stuff, none of the brands I had seen throughout the rest of the store were up here. Like there was no Tory Burch. There was no Acne Studios. There, None of that was up here. So... Maybe they just buy this as kind of like filler because they have five freaking floors. This place is amazing. All right, hold on. For those of you that get dizzy, <laughs> we're going back down all of the stairs. Um, and it's windy stairs. But it's really cool that you get to see the street view pretty high up. You can see um, the, the, Tokyo. Is, there's just so many people in Tokyo, you guys. So many people. And this was our first full day in Japan. We were struggling with the time change. Um, Tokyo is, or Japan is 17 hours ahead. This was definitely one of the biggest time changes I've ever experienced, except for when I went to Australia. I believe Australia is 21 hours ahead. Or is that New Zealand? I don't know. At some point, you go so far ahead that it's literally just like you're a day ahead. But this would get tricky once it reached, um, it was just hard, you guys. I'm not going to lie. The jet lag was hard. And then going down these winding stairs, I discovered some Tiffany's. Um, they had Tiffany's priced pretty reasonable, some of it. Priced anywhere from like 5,000 5, yen for a single piece up to like 40,000 yen. Uh, but I was just not in the market for jewelry. But like I said, if you are a mid-range to luxury seller and you've got the cash to play, I was looking at comps at some of those because this was on the lower floor. Jeez, I almost ran into that guy. Um, This was on the lower floor, so I had service. Like some of those Tiffany's earrings they had, the comps were saying like you could sell them anywhere from like 100 to 250 and they had some of them priced. Some of them were priced reasonably. Some of them were literally priced at the resale price um so be good to buy for yourself i don't know anything about jordans uh, are these vintage hubby was telling me like these are valuable i just i don't know anything about them but if i miss something and i should have picked it up <laughs> let me know i am going to be posting more about what we did throughout the day on my tiktok so i will link that down below uh but we went to the tokyo national museum we spent hours here hubby and i are big museum goers we love museums we go to them in every city we go to we spent hours here you guys it was so fascinating and they had things from all over asia and eurasia it was awesome so we stayed here for hours. This was all our first day. We went thrifting for hours. We actually went to this museum first. And in this museum, they have a tea house where you do traditional tea. And, you know, you sit on the floor and they bring you the food. We actually did a traditional tea ceremony, like a private booking, which I will show probably. I've been posting a lot of personal stuff on TikTok, like mom stuff, lifestyle stuff, travel stuff. I don't really talk to you guys about my TikTok because I feel like you guys may not be interested, by the way, these shoes, those $20 shoes saved me. But this is the matcha tea. I got the matcha tea. Hubby got a non-alcoholic like sake. I forget what it's called, but it was really good. You sit on the floor. I drank so much matcha. I ate so much matcha. We went to Shibuya Crossing this day. When I tell you we explored, you guys, every single day, we did 25 to 30,000 steps six days in a row. Our honeymoon was amazing, but we were completely... <laughs> worn out by the time it was time to fly home we wanted to see as much as possible so shibuya crossing is the craziest street ever you guys where you can basically just cross anywhere you can see there are designated crosswalks but people just go everywhere it's fascinating if you're ever in tokyo go to the starbucks 
on the corner and you can look down and see like the full magnitude of how crazy it is. They do make you buy a drink, but whatever. It's Starbucks. I got a matcha because when in Rome. Um, but I also had a lot of authentic matcha and it was great. Subscribe. Don't forget to follow along. We're so close to 20K and giddy up, friends. I have a lot of Japan content coming out you. Follow along on the TikTok. The Instagram is just strictly reselling. So if you want to see daily reselling content, I'm literally posting on there every single day. Both of those are linked down below. Ciao.